All right, I think we're gonna go ahead and get started. Good morning. All right. Pursuant to notice duly given in the preceding two Sundays and in writing through a congregational letter, this congregational meeting is hereby called to order. This meeting is governed by Robert's Rules of Order. I have appointed Mark Young as parliamentarian for today's meeting. The secretary for today's meeting will be Ruth Kaleo Milkey, assisted by Church Financial Secretary Holly Jerks. I have appointed two tellers for today's meeting, Gordon Melling and Peggy Boyler. The first order of business is to determine if there is a quorum, which consists of 50 voting members according to Article 5, Section 2B and 2E of our church constitution. Active members are confirmed members who have received Holy Communion or made a contribution of record to the congregation within the preceding two years. Those confirmed members who have neither received Holy Communion nor made a contribution within the two preceding years shall be classified as inactive. Also, a voting member is any active member. Gordon and Peggy have agreed to take account. Gordon and Peggy, do we have a quorum? Let the minutes reflect that we have a quorum. We certainly do. Um, I would like to ask that if you are stating a motion or seconding a motion, please state your name to help with documenting minutes of the meeting accurately. Also, I ask that if you have comments for discussion, that you speak into a microphone so that all in the congregation may hear you. Thank you. I invite Pastor Margaret Shaley to come forward for an opening prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we come here today, we just thank you for the gift of this time together, for the energy and interest in the room. We thank you for um, all that's been done to uh, improve and remodel our building, and we just ask now that you be with us and guide us in making decisions that um, continue to enhance the building in ways that bring ministry and your love and care to all those who enter into this place and that enable us to go out and witness even more strongly to your love for the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. All right, next we will approve the agenda for the meeting. The purpose of the meeting is to explain what we accomplished with the Lower Commons renovation, which was phase 1B. Explain the next phase of the old kitchen office remodel, phase 1C. Explain the financials of the next phase, 1C. Vote to support the decision of the council to proceed in completing phase 1C. At this point, I will entertain a motion to approve the agenda for today's meeting. discussion on the agenda. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed say nay. The agenda has been approved. At this time I invite Pastor Chris Mankey, Renovation Committee Co-Chair, to come forward and present the renovation updates. To meet our allotted time, questions will be entertained following the explanation of the project and the project financials. Pastor Chris. Morning, everyone. So, we'd like to go through uh, kind of what we've accomplished already up to this point, and then uh, we'd like to bring forward uh, finishing off uh, the entirety of phase one. So, um, I'm going to do double duty here. You see the master overall, oh, the master overall plan, um, and just to be clear, I think that some people are confused in the letter. They think we're moving towards phase two. We are not. So. Uh, when we put together the master overall plan, we spent about uh, three years putting together this master plan. Uh, it involved three major phases. One, which is what we are completing or asking to complete today, which involved new boilers, renovating our HVAC, new kitchen, renovating the lower commons, and then finishing off the old kitchen and making it usable and uh, upgrading the, the office with new furniture from the, uh, from the 1988 edition. Uh, the second phase that we are not asking to do today 
just to be clear, is a whole education wing uh, renovation. That would mean uh, moving the nursery up to the choir room, redoing the choir room to a different space, adding an addition off that end, potentially adding an addition off this end, um, renovating bathrooms. That we are not asking to do today. That potentially will come after we pay for everything and after Pastor Chris takes a break. <laughs> I think more on the latter than the first. Right? So, on um, that potentially, like, you know, down the road, 2020, you know, seven years from now. Uh, the last piece, um, which was probably the most questionable piece of the whole master plan, was adding a, another addition off the um, offices so that the offices double in size, move towards Milwaukee Avenue, and um, and then potentially another space above it for expanding the upper room. That's third phase, that would be like another eight to ten years down the road after the phase we're not doing, which is phase two. <laughs> Just want to be really clear about that because somebody said, we're going to be doing phase two, we're going to... No, we're not. So, that's not what we're asking today. So, moving on. Um, so, I gave you some things about... Maybe you can hit the advanced button. Um, what we accomplished in phase one, uh, we talked about this at the last uh, building meeting, which was essentially redo our boilers, redo all the piping to them. Uh, a lot of the registers that were completely clogged and corroded were replaced. Um, we redid our blowers. Um, we have two new blower rooms on either end of this space and um, changed a little bit with losing the stage and things like that. That was phase one, or part one of phase one. So this is where the technology, the terminology gets a little confusing. So 1A, that was 1A. Going to 1B, what we did accomplish in this last round that we are still paying for, that we're still working on, um, was a complete redo of the fire, fire sprinkler uh, system, adding a whole fire sprinkler system. Uh, that's a mouthful. And uh, one thing that was kind of interesting about that that I appreciated, a comment that came to me, a question that came to me, they said, um, so when are we going to start? <laughs> and I said, we're done. And um, they said, really, where is it? And uh, it, it, it kind of made me feel good because we did our best to try and hide, um, hide them as much as possible. And uh, sometimes you can't do that. Like up in the sanctuary, there's parts where you can see. Um, we did our best to try and conceal them, to blend them and everything else. But that made me at least feel a little bit better because that was a major concern for me. Um, with it, a new main that supports that, that comes off of Milwaukee Avenue. Um, we added a whole new fire system, uh, the alarm system. It's actually still going in. We're not, we haven't got that in yet, but it's going in soon. We just finished this last week um, completely changing out the, the alarm system. So we actually have a brand new alarm system. Um, brought it up to date from 1988, that we were still using that system from then. And so now it's up to date. Um, they just finished Friday. Uh, we have a new kitchen. I hope you've had the chance to walk through. We are still moving things around and figuring things out. Um, there's pieces that need to still be redone. Um, there's a countertop that needs to be resized. Um, you know, one of the coffee pots still needs to work. Um, <laughs> things like that. So we're still chasing um, our punch list. But I would say we're probably 95% done. Next to it is a, a whole new meeting room. Um, uh, if you quietly peek in there, the 8th graders are meeting in there right now, but you can kind of peek in there afterwards. Um, we did a lot with replacing our electric service, so in the boiler room, um, a lot of our old um, systems we took out and redid. Um, so we prepared for phase two, that whole addition of a, a change of the education wing. Uh, we actually did that work this time and got it done so that we're ready for that and we're upgraded so it's it won't be a, a major piece to the next one. Um, uh, there's some other new rooms that came in. We obviously did new carpeting in the hallway. We changed the hallway layout a little bit, did some new lighting. Um, we added HVAC. We've never had HVAC in the youth room, in that back room. And so that was one of the pieces that we added to that. Um, so that was really nice. That actually makes that an appropriate temperature throughout the year. And that's all tied to a digital system so that it can even be controlled um, uh, in a timer manner and things like that, and even remotely. Um, and then we got a little bit of work done on the old kitchen. We cut a new doorway into the office. That door is now in. Um, we resized the door uh, to the kitchen, 
uh, you can kind of see the old one leaning up against the wall. It's a 28 inch door. We could never get carts through the door into the kitchen. So we have a new uh, doorway that way and uh, we got a few of those things done. I included some of the plans for 1B on there that you've received in the past, but just so you kind of remember some of those spaces. So 1C, what we're really asking for today. And um, it essentially is, uh, and I, I'd encourage you to peek into the old kitchen on your way out. It's essentially a shell right now. Uh, we have um, essentially taken all of the plumbing out. Uh, we had four grease traps in there um, that nobody seemed to know what to do with, including cleaning. Um, so they had, I don't think they were ever clean. That's really a nasty job. If you're ever around watching someone clean out a grease trap that hasn't been touched in 15 years. Um, and we always wondered what that smell was. <laughs> I'm not kidding. We, we, we did a lot of work trying to figure out what the smell was. Right, Tim? Um, we, were, we were actually looking at cameras into the pipes to try and figure out where the smell was coming from. It was, it was about this much caked in grease um, in each one of those, four of them. So we completely took one of them out. The others that um, we didn't need to plumb through, uh, we filled with concrete. Um, so they are completely sealed up and uh, smells a lot better. Um, <laughs> there's all sorts of jokes there. I'm just going to move on. So uh, that room, essentially we did work with Greg Strand and our architect to really vision what could we do there. And uh, we've always thought of that as a workroom. We currently have the workroom way back here in the corner. So when we need to do the copies for the um, for the uh, services on Sunday morning when you make 700 copies of the bulletin, you use a high-speed Rizzo for that. Um, all that stuff is in the back. So that'll now move closer to the office through that new door. Uh, we'll move some of the noisy equipment out of the office into that space so that our copier will be um, located in that room so it gets some of the noise of whenever you're running copies or um, we use it as our main printer also uh, for the office. So gets it out of there into a workroom. And you can see that um, that picture, I think. Can you get the picture up there? That's the pink section that Greg has drawn for us. Couple ahead there. So you see it on 14. Fourteen. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. One more. There we go. So it's a pink section. I don't know if it comes up over there. Um, also, in splitting the room in half, we wanted to make another meeting room. That has been one thing that we've always talked about, is having another. Um, and part of the education piece, that whole change of the education wing, is how do we add more meeting spaces? We are constantly, as a staff, you know, where do we move this group, that group, and often it's, they're going to need to just sit in the commons, sit in an open space. We often will even push people into the sanctuary where they just have to move some chairs around and make a circle. So getting us one more meeting room and uh, trying to make it a little bit nicer, similar to our current conference room, um, adding some uh, cabinetry on the end like our current conference room, and um, uh, because we've got the plumbing right there anyways, add a sink and, um, and probably a little Keurig machine so that um, meetings can have coffee with them and such, uh, make it real easy. So that's the, the new conference room style uh, that essentially be right when you enter in. Uh, people get confused about where the dividing line is in there, where the two rooms were. So I, I threw some tape on the floor and you can see the, you can see where the wall is, where it will be. Um, the last piece, um, so when we talked with the congregation at the last building meeting, we said we want, part of the whole phase of 1B was to get that usable, uh, usable space so we can move equipment in there. and. Uh, and so we had always, always planned on putting some carpet in, do a ceiling, finish the walls, add some electric. Um, so it's a usable space. Uh, the more we talked about it, um, you know, you just start to say, well, we could add some cabinets that would make that more usable. We could add, um, um, we could add the wall. We could make the, you know, you start to um, bring it up a little bit more and make it a little bit more usable. But then obviously you get into cost. Um, then we also said, well, if we're talking about this, let's talk about the office because that's kind of that, the last big part of 1C. And um, we're not talking about changing walls. We're not talking about changing anything major in there. It's essentially new carpeting. 
Again, that carpeting is still from the 88 um, edition, so I think we got our money's worth out of it. Um, and it's also the furniture from that, uh, that time frame, which is a little bit dated. It still works, but now that the uh, doorway has been cut, it's really cut off one of those half, half of those workstations. So Sonia's workstation is essentially cut in half. So envisioning with Greg, what, we, what could we do? Um, there's been issues with the office in the past. The dividers are very high, so you always have to stand up to look if someone's coming in the, in the door. To do a more standard height, which is um, 50 inches nowadays, where you drop that down. Um, so you're still, if you're sitting, not necessarily looking at everybody coming in, in and out of the door, but it's much easier to see if you, if you want. Um, repositioning some of the furniture so it makes a little bit more sense. We still, I, I don't want to say that we've got this firmly worked out. I would say we still need to do some work on this, um, on this plan. Um, but when we brought it to council um, this, this, this month, I said, okay, um, how much do we want to do? How much of this do we want to bite off? Um, because um, obviously this is taking on more than we talked about at the last meeting. And the council really felt strongly to move ahead on it. But um, wanted to say, you know, but we need to give the congregation that chance to be included, be um, communicated to about what's going on, and then support it or not. And um, so that's where we are today. We wanted to bring that to everyone here and, and talk about that. Um, I think that's probably enough for right now. There'll probably be some questions after Rob's stop. So we'll leave it there. Thanks. <coughs> Thank you, Pastor Chris. All right, at this time, I invite Rob Waddell, church treasurer, to come forward and present the project financials. As a reminder, questions will be entertained following Rob's presentation. Rob? Good morning, everybody. I uh, really just wanted to, to extend an appreciation to Pastor Chris, really, for, for his very much transparency on what is a, a, a good news communication uh, here to the broader congregation. Uh, the transparency around this is, is really just incredible. It's really a, a relatively small request, and uh, you know, I, just, I just think it, it's uh, just very appreciative that he brought this before the, the uh, full congregation. Um, I would like to thank the, the congregation for your support. It's your support that makes this meeting possible, that makes this very discussion possible. Uh, support for the program has been very strong. Uh, contributions for the program have come in ahead of, of expectations. Uh, we have scheduled all pledges. Many families have been able to accelerate their pledge contributions, and we have received new additional gifts to the campaign um, after the initial uh, kickoff more than a year, a year and a half ago. Uh, but it is that support that makes a meeting like this possible. I would also like to thank the Building Renovation Committee. Uh, they've put in countless hours on this project. Uh, Jerry Wonderlich and, and Ray Eisenman from the congregation, uh, there's many others. I would like to uh, extend a note of appreciation to uh, Tim Nelson and T.B. Johns. Uh, they have done a great job managing costs throughout the project. Uh, they have run into a couple of unexpected events, but even despite that, have been able to keep the cost of the project not only on budget, but under budget. And it is simply because we are under budget that we are able to, to again, have this meeting today. Um, if we look at, at the project financials, um, overall, our original plan uh, that we came, uh, we discussed back at the Finance Committee uh, in April of this year, that we presented to the congregation, I believe in, in June, uh, I believe it was June, um, was a $980,000 uh, Plan B renovation. Uh, we had planned to finance up to $950,000 of that. I knew I had cash coming in, um, so I did secure financing with uh, BMO Harris Bank. Um, the, the, the financing with BMO Harris Bank is at $850,000. What we ran our numbers on at the Finance Committee was a 5% interest rate. Um, interest rates have been exceedingly attractive for those that, that are, are in the borrowing capacity. Uh, um, interest rates have been attractive. Our current construction finance rate is 2.25%. Is and a long-term five-year note at the moment is, is trending just about 3.5%, maybe a little north of there. 
So the numbers are quite a bit lower than uh, what the Finance Committee had available in April uh, when we discussed the initial plan. So as, as we talk about the, the revised plan of rolling in uh, 1C, accelerating the 1C plan, initially we've talked not about doing that until May of 2016, but just given the uh, current cost of the project coming in under budget, the acceleration of pledge payments, it, it does make this possible. If you add in an, an, the $90,000 for, for 1C, that brings the total project cost to uh, $1,070,000. We did, uh, we will have um, $350,000 cash on hand, uh, which will lead to financing about $720,000. Again, I have secured financing with PMO Harris, at roughly 3.5% uh, on a five-year fixed basis, up to $850,000, so we're well within the financing that's been approved uh, for the project. Um, you know, I guess really just to put a timeline in, in terms of, of next steps, um, we're really just looking to complete the renovation. Um, you know, the, the renovation then will be completed uh, in the balance of November, uh, moving into December. We would convert our construction loan to a, a longer term facility. Uh, we can either go a floating interest rate or five-year fixed rate, that's a decision uh, that the Finance Committee will make a recommendation to the full council for their approval. Uh, looking at, at um, 2016, our current three-year pledge uh, cycle ends May 2016. If needed, and, and if is, a, a, I think, a qualifier at this point, um, we may have a debt reduction campaign. Um, the way the project financials are looking, uh, that, that debt reduction campaign uh, may become a non-event. We will have to see when we get closer to, to May of 2016. But I do want to throw it out there just in case uh, it does come to fruition that people have it on their, their radar. Uh, looking at it, uh, if we sketch it forward, 2018, we should have our, our full loan paid off within the next three to five years. Again, it depends if we take on a variable Interest rate would be certainly, uh, we'd be incentivized to pay it off early. Uh, if we have a fixed rate uh, note, it, it really would depend on, on uh, uh, timing of, of cash flows and, and current interest rates at that time. And what, what Pastor Chris has, has thrown on here is, is, is noting that we do have, we have identified to the congregation uh, phase two. But phase two is something that is not on the agenda uh, for quite a while. Um, Planning uh, looks like it would begin in, in the 2017-2018 arena. Uh, construction would not even begin until uh, we are, are starting the next decade in 2020. Um, that's pretty much what I have. Again, just appreciate uh, the generosity and, and their support of the project. Um, we'll now uh, entertain any questions from the congregation for either Bob or Pastor Chris. Those are, um, we have bidded it out, and so th those are with bids. Um, there's a few that are still flexible. The cabinets, how much we do, how little we do, there are pieces we can we can pull out. Um, so we try to put in everything we can think of. And so we have it fully bidded and um, ready to start. I think the cabinet piece is the biggest question mark. But we bid it to get a full number on it, and the question is how much do we use or take out or change. Yeah. Do we have any other questions? Okay. Oh, oh. Uh, the question has been called. Do I have a motion to call the question? Or second? I don't need a motion. Oh. 
So, well, I've got parliamentarian. What is he doing? Are we ready to vote? We're ready to vote. Okay. I was just hung up on the call to question. Um, all right. So, if there's no more questions, we'll now vote to approve the project. Since this is this phase stays within the original financial motion approved by the congregation at its annual meeting, we will vote on one motion. Um, we have had a request to do this um, via paper ballot, so we will um, be voting um, by paper. Um, you'll vote yes, no, or abstain, um, but keep in mind a vote for abstain is essentially the vote no. Um, and now we need to make the motion. Uh, the motion before us reads, I move that we give approval to move ahead with completing phase 1C within the borrowing cap already approved by the congregation. Is there someone that will make that motion? I so move. Okay. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. <laughs> Sorry. Joanne. Okay, thank you, Joanne. Do we have any uh, further discussion on the motion? Okay, I'd ask that you uh, complete your paper ballots and uh, we will come around and collect them. Um, Anyone need a pen also? <laughs> Anyone need a pen? That wasn't mine. <laughs> Does anybody else need a ballot? Anybody have a ballot that's voting? Again, uh, like Rob said, a big thank you to our construction crew, TV John, Tim Nelson and his family um, do a fantastic job. Um, Tim's dad, Dan, who's got how many years of experience? Probably, he doesn't even know. He's got to be 40 years of experience. He is here daily uh, walking the building, um, often making sure the workers are doing exactly what he tells them to, and sometimes he tells me what to do. So, um, <laughs> we have fun. Uh, but he's, he's fantastic, and it's been a real blessing to um, have TV John really supporting us uh, through both of these phases and moving into phase uh, 1C. Um, this is a small project for them. This is a small project. They're doing bigger stuff like, um, aren't you guys working on the Watertown planning section and all of that? So um, this is a small project, and uh, the attention that we get I always appreciate. And, um, there are members out at our Saviors in Oconomowoc, and you can feel when uh, Dan Nelson is walking around here that this is a labor of love for him. This is about helping a church be stronger, and um, so I'm always impressed by that, and I really appreciate uh, the work that they do. Also, Greg Strand, um, Greg has really blessed us with his time and focus. Um, he's, uh, he was part of the last uh, 2000 building uh, 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 committee, a renovation committee and he knows this building inside and out so having an architect that walks in knowing the building already and knowing how it flows knowing how the ministry works is is a huge thing because often architects walk in and they say tell me what you want me to do you know I'm fresh here I don't know anything um, Greg really came in with that sense of knowing us and that was uh, a real really a blessing to us so that's that's been wonderful thanks also to our building committee we have um, I, I would say thoroughly burn them up, and um, and so I appreciate their time and energy. I've been trying not to um, tax them too much more because they have done a fantastic job with everything they've done. Um, but we need to we need to wrap this up. 
Um, no, we, thank you. we do have to say thanks to Pastor Chris too, who is here <laughs> early in the morning and late at night dealing with all the vendors and all the details that have made this renovation so beautiful. But it's because of everyone else that this has gone so well. So I really appreciate that. Are we were ready. We're ready. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So um, I've been told by my parliamentarian that we, with a quorum of 50, um, we had two no votes and one abstain, um, and then a bunch of yes. <laughs> so uh, yeah it's well over 50 so the uh, the motion carries and uh, phase 1c has been approved by the congregation okay I will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn today's meeting so okay. can I have a second do we want to talk about that <laughs> All right, all in favor of adjourning the meeting, say aye. Aye. All opposed, say nay. The motion is passed. We are adjourned, and I invite Pastor Chris to come forward for a closing prayer. And one final thing, this was originally scheduled to be our uh, Tanzania uh, education hour, so they are prepared to give um, uh, sharing time about their trip, and I'm a part of that too. Um, so I did want to, we were, we were hesitant about shortchanging them, but um, they've been really good spirits about it. And, so encourage you to please stay if you can and, and hear about that right after this. So we're prepared to start right away. Um, if you are leaving, we just ask each quietly do that so we can start the adult ed. But let's say a word of prayer. Dear great and gracious God, thank you so much for um, all that you bless us with. We have been blessed with a wonderful ministry to be a part of. Um, so many wonderful people doing incredible things in your name. And, and I feel so fortunate to be a part of that, and thank you for how you guide and lead us each and every day. Um, this, this campaign, this, this renovation, as you know, has always been about strengthening the ministry, strengthening our, our ministry space. And Lord, um, as we move into its use now that the kitchen is done, we ask that you continue to move us in new ways and bless us to really um, help this new space um, that much more glorify you and your name. We thank you for all these things, and we thank you for the blessing of each day. In your name we pray. Amen. Just a quick note, um, because we do have this new space, this new kitchen, we are asking the question of what else can we do with it? Um, what new ideas do we have for a kitchen ministry? Um, we've got the whole meal ministry going, but they've um, moved into the inner city with that, and still going well there. Um, but you know what else can we do? So if you have someone at your at your heart that really is interested in that, want to be a part of brainstorming, visioning what we could do with a kitchen ministry, you know all sorts of things. Um, see me, see Margaret. Um, we'd love to talk to you more about that because um, we have a wonderful space. Um, somebody who was at the coffee um, ambassadors yesterday walked in and go, I have never seen a church kitchen that has looked this nice, and that's that's really wonderful. Um, but it shouldn't just sit there, it should be used. And so what do we do with it? And um, what new pieces can we bring to our ministry through it? So um, help us to think about those things, okay? So if you can stay, please stay. If you need to leave, um, blessings on your way.